Okay, this is Blastoise's run for Gen 2. I am playing on Pokemon Silver version, to be specific, but Gold and Silver were the same game. They just had different Pokemon appearances. So this challenge is going to be... It's a little bit harder than Gen 1, and I'll tell you why. Gen 1 is a shorter game, for one, but Gen 1 also has less mandatory battles that you need to participate in. I've done two runs of Gen 2. One was with Chikorita and the other one was with Feraligator. Chikorita obviously struggled being a weaker Pokemon. I actually had to cut that video, which I don't do very often. Feraligator was pretty good and I would suspect Blastoise would be very similar. The thing is though, because Gen 2 has so many um, like mandatory battles, I'd actually forgotten how many just are. Now, as you see in my code here, you still see Totodile pick up, but when my code works, it comes up as Blastoise. So, and on the code that I have for this, you have to pick the ball in the middle. If you pick the ball to the left or the right, it doesn't work. There is probably a code to make the ball on the left and right work, but the one I have does the middle, which is fine for what this run intends. So first thing about Blastoise, good opening learn set, very, you know, it's tackle and bubble will get you through the first part of the game pretty easily. Blastoise, as you saw, also only needed 44 points to level up, which is very, very quick. So Blastoise will gain levels quickly and thus will make him quite strong. So as we're leaving New Bark Town, we will make our way through up to Cherry Grove City and it's kind of um, what I would say tradition to get the town map off this guy. As uh, you know, just the, the nature of the game, it's part of the game. So in the beginning of Pokemon Silver and Gold, you have to make your way through to Professor Elm. Have I got it wrong? I have, it's not Professor Elm, he is the professor in the lab. Mr. Pokemon. That's, that's the name I was trying to get. And here is Mr. Pokemon here. He is also with Professor Oak, who is the professor from the original red, blue and yellow. What are the differences between Crystal along with Gold and Silver? Crystal had a little bit more in the story. The Ruins of Alf had a bit more dialogue. You could get the Unknown decks. I don't think you got the Unknown decks in Pokemon Silver and Gold, if I'm remembering it correctly. And, okay, here we go. First rival battle. We have got Chikorita against Blastoise, and obviously, because Blastoise is a lot bulkier, Chikorita doesn't know any grass moves at that point. We do get an easy win. And, as I was saying, a couple of the spots in Crystal are a little bit different. The Ice Path is laid out a little bit differently. Uh, a couple of the item finder items are in slightly different spots. But still, pretty much the same game. Um, why do I call him Abe? I don't know, actually. Just the first name that popped to my head. Um, in... I think in the lore, I think this trainer's name is Ethan. I, I don't actually know what the rival's name is. I have read it before, but I can't quite remember. So, basically, part of the game is you have to go to Professor Elm to pick up this mystery egg. And this is, um, in Gen 1, there was no Pokemon breeding stuff. Um, the breeding it, and the whole gender thing of Pokemon came in in Gen 2. And now, why did I catch Sentret? Uh, I've caught Sentret to use for HMs. Sentret can learn um, Surf and Strength, even though I'll teach Surf to... Actually, did it learn Strength? I'm recording the voice after playing this, which I don't do very often. But I, I think I prefer to do it live, but... The last seven weeks have been a bit different in my recording space, so I had I had to do it. And I also needed a break from Gem 1 because I had recorded a lot of Gem 1 and 
Another new thing in this gen is the trainers will spin around randomly. That wasn't a thing in Gen 1. It's very annoying, especially with the amount of mandatory battles that this game already has. But we get through we get through the areas and we head into Violet City. Now there are two things to do in Violet City. You need to go to the Sprout Tower to get the HM for cut. You also need to go and battle Faulkner, the leader of the Violet City Gym, who has a Pidgey and a Pidgeotto who know Mudslap, which can be a very, very trying battle if you're if you get hit by that move. Mudslap will lower your accuracy, and as you know, accuracy lowering in these games is completely broken. So Blastoise. Blastoise does take a little bit of a hit in Sprout Tower, being his weakness to Bell Sprout and its Vine Whip attack. But there are some pickup potions about, so you can avoid having to go back to the Pokemon Center. And the thing about having so many mandatory battles is um, technically I didn't need to battle that trainer. But. But um, anyway, the thing about there being so many mandatory battles in this game is um, doing a solo run, your Pokemon will level up very quickly. Now, you do need some early levels to actually get through. When you reach Azalea Town, that rival battle and Bugsy, the gym leader, they're actually quite tough battles. Even leveled up a bit, they are actually still generally tough battles. All right, there's an escape rope. Usually I use that escape rope to um, do the first unknown puzzle. Um, in Crystal, you get the little hieroglyphic at the back and it has escape, water, ho -oh, and light. And at the start of the game, you can use an escape rope to bust one of them open. Okay, two good wins. And I decided to heal again, just in case those little extra spots of HP come in handy. Because Faulkner could be a tough battle, even for Blastoise at this level. Blastoise, it has just learnt Water Gun. He one-shots Pidgey with a critical hit, and it was barely even a contest in the end. Blastoise did hit a crit as well, which did make the difference, but... That's the way that these games are with that critical hit ratio and that luck-based factor. So, the reason why I'm grabbing Togepi is Togepi can learn Rock Smash and it can also learn Flash. It can also learn Headbutt. Togepi actually learns really useful moves. As a battle Pokemon, it's actually not too bad. Togetic as well is actually better than what you would think so eventually we'll do runs with those two Pokemon Togepi might be a bit interesting because it's only got charming growl I think to begin with okay this man wants to sell us a slowpoke tail for 1 million poker dollars which is higher than the full amount that we can get we can only get up to the six nines Yes, make a joke about that if you want in the comments. So, random spinning trainer, we get managed to get past that one. Now this one is mandatory, I know that already. And Geodudes, obviously Blastoise will be fine in this cave. And we managed to get past another one of the randomized trainers. And obviously we can't avoid this battle. It is against a Vulpix. And there is Hiker Anthony here too. He also... Oh, I thought he randomly spun. Now, for those who don't know, there is a Super Potion right there. No, it's Full Heal. Oh. What's that? I think that might be a Super Potion in Crystal. Oh, maybe it isn't. I don't know. I just remember there's an item there. So, 
two things we need to do in a daily town. First, we need to go and see Kurt. And we need to go through the Slowpoke well and get Team Rocket out of there. And then we need to do Azalea's Town Gym. And then there's a rival battle. There's actually three things. And then, of course, we need to go through Ilex Forest. Okay, all the battles in here are mandatory. All four of them are mandatory. We can't skip any of the Team Rocket members. Huh. Usually I don't get a Slowpoke to appear that easily either. Now, Blastoids has been poisoned, but that's fine. The Team Rocket battles in, in that cave aren't really that tough, especially for a Blastoise who's already a pretty bulky Pokemon. Now, I decide to take on Bugsy first before the rival because the rival does have a Bayleaf, which can do quite a lot of damage to me. Now, something I can do in that full hill will come in handy. And now I think from memory, I think that was an accident. I didn't actually mean to battle that trainer. But because I haven't done many Gen 2 runs, I haven't gotten sort of used to using the speed up toggle. And believe me, this game is longer. It's a little bit, is it more difficult than red and blue? Probably, to be honest. But um, the point being is that um, without the speed up toggle, these runs would take a very, very long time. And as you see, Scyther kept using Furry Cutter and he almost, and by God, I mean almost, knocked out Blastoise. Furry Cutter is, it's like Rollout. It gets stronger every time it hits. It's not 100% accurate. I think it's maybe base, maybe base 90, 95. But yeah, now let's get into the rival. Bite will knock out Ghastly. Bayleaf will come out and my best bet is to just go for Bite. Now let's go for Water Gun and knock out Zubat now. Even though I won that battle, that battle could go a different way. Blastoise could get knocked out by Bayleaf. Remember Razor Leaf has a high crit ratio and it's also a, a decent move. But anyway, Blastoise got through. When we reach Goldenrod, we can get the TM for Ice Punch, which will make a lot of difference. All right, we chase Farfetch'd back to the Charcoal Man. He will give us the TM for, oh sorry, the HM for Cut. And as you see, Centret can learn Cut. That's why I caught Centret earlier. That's right, from memory, I think I, I thought it learned Strength, but it didn't. I think when I got to Chuck's gym, I think I found that out. But as we progress through Ilex Forest, there are item finder items here, which I was trying to remember exactly where they were. I haven't played Gen 2 for a while. So I actually, I think there's one there in Crystal. I think the Crystal Ilex Forest items are slightly different. But it's been a long time since I last played Gen 2. So I don't actually remember fully where the items are. I remember where most of them are. There's one in the daycare. There's one by the pool. Now that trainer does have max vision. That's Camper Todd. The phone calls are a little bit different in Crystal as well. Um, you know how you get the trainer calls? Uh, in Crystal, they have a few more mechanics. They can tell you about when Goldenrod sales are on. That's what Camper Todd does. I, I believe those trainers still did that in Silver and Gold, but they didn't tell you they did that. So, there's a few things to do here. You can get the bike. Um, I'm also going to grab Spiro from this guy. And the reason being is so I have a Pokemon that can use Fly. Now along here, they've not all the battles are mandatory, but they are 
troublesome. And because I haven't played Gen 2 for a while, what you will see eventually is I will eventually run into these trainers. Um, one of the trainers here are spinning. One of them's fixed spinning, so you'll go like up, left, down, right, and he'll keep making that motion. The other one doesn't. And straight away, I forgot that I had to, and in the end I just thought, oh, to hell with it. Otherwise, I'm gonna end up forgetting again. And anyway, Blastoise will need the levels for Red. Red is like, is one of the toughest battles, I think, exist in the Pokemon series. So there is a coin case down here, which we don't need for the run, but again, there are battles down here that you can't, that the trainer has, and that's random. That Licky Tongue nose cut for some reason. There's a coin case, I pick it up anyway. I am also sort of running off muscle memory here. Um, there's an, to the right here, there's an antidote. There's also a pickup item in the middle of the stalls, the shop stalls as well. I can't remember what it is, but I know there is an item there. Why exactly I went down to that underground path? I couldn't tell you. I don't actually remember why I did that. Now that question I got wrong, it's... Use apricorn. He doesn't use apricorn, he uses apricots. Now it's not Marie, it's Mary. So, but... I remember when I did a run with Chikorita, I actually forgot to get that radio card. And when I reached Lavender Town, uh, the guy was like, oh, you don't have a radio card. I was like, huh, too true, my friend, too true. I had to go all the way back to Goldenrod, which I just took that train from Saffron to Goldenrod. It was fine. I remember back in the day playing this for the first time when I reached Kanto and found out that I could revisit the area from red, blue and yellow, I was like gobsmacked. It was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. Uh, don't teach rapid spin, it's like base 20, it's weak. It's got 40 PP and that's the reason why, because it's a weak move. Now, Whitney. Whitney is a trainer that made a lot of people almost quit playing Pokemon. Obviously, Whitney is actually not that difficult. Um, if you catch, it might depend on the game, I can't fully remember, but it will either, I think it was either a Machop or a Drowsy. I think it was Abra and Crystal, I think it was Drowsy in these games, but I could be wrong. But I remember buying an Abra from the game corner and trading that. You trade it in the Goldenrod on the fifth floor where the TMs are. Is it fifth or six? One of the two. Anyway, um, a battle with, well, as you see, the battle with Whitney actually went better than I thought it would. Just using water gun. It took four water guns and Miltank did hit roll out a few times. But Blastoise was able to hang on. I think Miltank may have missed its second rollout. That is the thing with rollout. It does have that tendency to miss. But anyway, what I was saying, you can trade that Abra you buy from the game corner you go into the Pokemon and you can trade it for a Machop, which is nicknamed Muscle. And here we grab that Squirt Bottle as well. I remember it took me so long to figure out how to get past Sudo Wudo when I first played this game. Like I never used to go into every NPC house. I do that mandatory now whenever I do like my own playthroughs. And a Pokemon game I've never played. I will talk to literally everyone. Now something you can do here, you can go down here and you can grab the TM for Dick. And despite having uh, already a decent learn set, I can get rid of Bubble for Dick. Now where Dick will come in handy will be against Morty. He is, Morty is harder than Whitney. And oh, there we go, there's Togepi. Now I, 
decided to just battle that trainer. His Abras and his Kadabra aren't that difficult because I have Bite. Blastoise is getting over leveled. I can't really, I can't really help it because there's just so many trainers to battle. Um, I'll grab Rock Smash from this guy, although I don't think I ever actually used it. Togepi can learn it, so, but I, I don't remember ever actually using Rock Smash. I don't think you need it to progress to anywhere that you can't get to. You can take shortcuts, like in um, in Dark Cave, you can get to a couple of spots in that with Rock Smash at this stage of the game. Okay, now I'm heading back to New Bark Town with the intention of showing old Elm um, Togepi. So Togepi can learn Flash, Headbutt. As Togetic, it can also learn Fly. So it's actually a pretty useful Pokemon to have in your party because it learns Headbutt and Rock Smash you can use for the trees. If you're uh, looking to complete that Dex, you need Headbutt to get Heracross, Apom, Pineco, uh, Executes, drop out of the trees. They're, uh, they're the big four. Heracross, uh, if you go to Mount Mortar and into like the little second part that you have to surf to, there's a couple of headbutt trees a little bit to the south of the entrance of the cave you got to surf to. Uh, that's where I always catch Heracross. I do that on Crystal though. Whenever I do a personal Gen 2 playthrough, I always play Crystal. It's also got the little added story with um, Suicune as well. Now that trainer has full vision, I can't get past him without a battle. And basically here, this is where the game really starts to break open. The game doesn't particularly tell you which way to go. Um, you can go through Mount Mortar without having to surf and you can get to Mahogany Town. You can also, well first in Acritique, we'll go to the Burn Tower. So the battle in Silver and Gold is a little bit different. In, in Crystal, well technically you can skip this battle altogether. You don't actually have to do this rival battle. And is this where he beats me for the first time? Yeah, I think it is. I think his Bayleaf actually knocked me out here. I should have actually gone for Dig there because Dig would have done more damage. But as you see, yeah, this is where the game, the difficulty does get a little bit more. Yeah. And this is where I remember I forgot to get Ice Punch. Ice Punch is a very, very powerful move in this game. And after an accidental battle. Yes, I. I intended to buy it and I just completely forgot. That's that's just a uh, uh, not played this for some time effect. I haven't played this for like, would it be in the years? Maybe close to it. But anyway, there is Ice Punch. I grabbed the other punches just to see if Blastoise could learn them. I didn't think it would be able to, but sometimes, sometimes Pokemon can learn those odd moves, but Blastoids cannot. He can learn Ice Punch. And it's time to get rid of Tackle. Ice Punch will make the battle against Bayleaf much easier. So we did have to backtrack a little bit, but that's not too bad. And I'm just mesmerized by the theme of, as I'm listening to it and I can hear it in the background, the National Park theme music is very, very relaxing. Anyway, here we go. Round two of this rival battle. So yes, the legendary Pokemon in here is indeed Ho-Oh. Well, Ho-Oh is a legend. In here you encounter the three dogs. When you go to the um, 
to the other tower, that's where Hoyo lives. Um, Burn Tower is structured very differently in this game to how it is in Crystal. Ah, oh, I do use Ox Smash for something. So technically, oops, I went down the ledge. Technically you don't have to come in here, but as it's such a part of the game, it's an iconic kind of quest on this game. Let's awaken Raikou, Suicune, and Entei. All right, now that that's done, I am going to head in and get the TM, sorry, the HM, I should say, for Surf. There are five trainers that you have to defeat, and they all each carry an evolution at level 17, which gives you 720 experience points, which is quite a lot. So it is going to give Blastoise another level. As you say, he is massively overleveled, and I can't really stop that from happening just because there's so many battles that you have to participate in. But as you see, Blastoise gets through the Kimono Girls easy enough. We get the HM for Surf. Good water move. Uh, I think, from memory, I think it's base 90. Centret can learn it too, so Centret's a very useful, very useful Pokemon. All right, now that that's done, because I've played this game before, I know that the game kind of intends for you to go to the left. You can go to left or right. Um, to use Surf, though, you need the gym from Ecritique City. If you look in the player's training card, you see Price is listed as the seventh gym, so... You are supposed to go left, but there's nothing obvious to tell you which way to go. So, either way, the levels are kind of the same as well, aren't they? Um, between Chuck, Jasmine and Price, their Pokemon levels aren't that varied. They're all around... Chucks are slightly less. Jasmine and Price hit around the same, around that 35 mark. Anyway, it is time. Let's head down. Head down and over to Olivine City, then across the sea to Seanwood. Is it Seanwood or Cyanwood? Seanwood sounds better. I, I haven't watched Gen 2's part of the anime for a long time either. Now, once you come down here, you can skip those two trainers. When you come back up, you have to battle them. You can't get back until you battle them. So, there goes our rival. Didn't have to battle him this time, but... See, now technically, you can skip the whole burn tower part. You don't actually have to... You don't actually have to do that battle. So the trainers in this lighthouse tower, they're not too difficult. And finally, we can actually skip a trainer or two on our way up. But as you see, we can't avoid him, him or his Growlithe. Fortunately, that is as far as we need to go into the lighthouse, as if you come down here, you will encounter another mandatory battle. Then you'll go down and down, and then he will see you from that distance, but he spins randomly, so we manage to avoid him. Jasmine, the gym leader, will tell us that Ampharus, or Amphi, is unwell, and we must go to Seanwood to get some medicine. Now, I forgot to do something here. Can you guess what it is? I will give you a few seconds. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm walking around up there so I can say, oh, there's no, um, that battle tower, I think it was called. That is not in gold and silver, it was in crystal. Um, can, do you see what I forgot to get in Olivine City? 
give you a few seconds. You would have guessed it by now if you know. Yes, I forgot to pick up the HM for strength, which means, yep, I will have to backtrack to Olivine as you will see in the upcoming minutes. All right, do a quick heal. I decide, uh, let's do the gym. So Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan. Hitmonchan gets frozen solid, nice hit from Blastoise. Much up, much oak. Easy. Oh yeah, there we go. This is where I realized our oh, crud. I forgot to get strength. But anyway, that's the trainer that gives you that shuckle. Now, can Shuckle learn... Does Shuckle learn strength? Because that is a Pokemon that I could pick up because in this game I actually caught a Krabby. To use strength. If Shuckle can learn it, I don't remember if Shuckle can learn it or not. And as I'm commentating this, my phone is not around me. But that's okay. So you get strength just randomly from this dude sitting in this random cafe. Again, there's no clue about that as well. And this is where I found out that Sentra doesn't actually learn strength. I don't know if Ferret does, but this is where I thought, oh, well, Sentra's still pretty useful, and I hadn't played this for a long time. So I decided to grab me a good rod and I head over here with the intention of catching a Krabby because I'm pretty sure Krabby can learn strength. And the Pokemon I ended up catching was, as you will see, took me, as the rods go in this, uh, there we go, I actually had a Corsola appear and I was like, huh, okay, uh, does that, and I caught it first try with a Lure Ball, which Corsola is a very difficult Pokemon to catch, so that was actually really lucky. But yes, Corsola can learn strength, so I'm like, ah, uh, you know, tomato, tomato, same thing. Now that we have strength, let's head all the way back to Cianwood City while dodging trainers and little evil jellyfish Pokemon. And let's head back up to the gym to take on Chuck. Now, how do you reckon this battle will go? When I was coming up to Chuck, I was like, ah, oh, it shouldn't be too difficult. I mean, what's he got? He's got his, uh, he's got his Polyrath and he's got his, um, what's the other Pokemon he has? Is it a Machoke? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, it's Machoke and Polyrath, isn't it, that he has? Primeape, okay. Anyway, Primeape does nothing. Polyrath, I'm like, uh, it shouldn't be too difficult, should it? So I use Dig. He hits me with Dynamic Punch. I get hit in confusion. I get hit again by Dynamic Punch, then Hypnosis, before getting hit by another Dynamic Punch. Now, the reason why I, I commentate it like that is because Dynamic Punch is like a 50% hit move and he hit me with it three times three out of four times he hit me with dynamic punch at least I think it's base 50 accuracy I know it's not the most accurate move maybe it's base 70 I don't know I can't remember but it's not an accurate move you're unlucky to get hit by that and now Polyrath again has put me to sleep and again has hit me with dynamic punch straight off the bat and I'm keep hitting myself in confusion so Blastoise is having a real tough time with Polyrath even though it's five levels higher Dig isn't doing that much damage Dig isn't base 100 in this game like it was in yellow blue and red Dig was back to base 80 in this so I decide to freaking hell with Chuck and his Polyrath because I'm not gonna sit there and keep losing I actually decide to go and battle Jasmine first, because Jasmine will be an easier battle. 
because um, Steelix is still in ground, so Surf will do a lot of damage. The Magnemite could hit me, but it should be fine. So let's head all the way up into this tower, the lighthouse, all the way back up to Jasmine and give her the medicine for Ampharus. And down the hole. There we go. Jasmine will head back to her gym after this. And we can get in another level or two during this process and that might give us the edge to get past that polyrath. Okay, surf on Mac. No, I use dig. There we go, that's why. And surf on Steelix, one hit. Jasmine, easy done. All right, I've grown a level. I am now going to head back to, oops. Yep, that was an accident, but that's okay. Get through that swimmer. All the way across, dodging all the jellyfish and back to Sam Wood's gym. The reason why I want to get this gym is because that lady outside, who is Chuck's wife, will give you the HM for fly after you defeat him, which will make things a lot easier. So, Ice Punch on Primate, good hit, no health lost. Perfect start. Dig does Mind Reader. Good, we can get another dig in. It's going to take at least four hits to knock Polyrath out. Um, then it went for, um... alright, that time I got hit by Dynamic Punch. I shouldn't be going for Dig, I should be going for Surf, which I did on the second turn, and this time we get the win. Um, when it uses Mind Reader and it takes aim, that guarantees it a hit. Um, Mind Reader's a good move if you've got moves like Zap Cannon or, um, or Dynamic Punch. Um, I don't know if Mind Reader... Could you teach that to a Pokemon that's got like Guillotine or Horn Drill and make it an instant hit? I just had that thought. I, I'm not sure. We'll find out as I do more of these ones. So I'm just going to skip Mount Mortar altogether. It's the most, one of the most annoying spots in the game to try and navigate your way through. I was always skipped it when I was a kid. I don't anymore when I play for me, I know my way around it well enough now, but... So first of all, as you see, we need to head up and accidentally run into another battle, but we need to head up to Lake of Rage, and um, interesting theory, um, Lake of Rage was probably intended to be another town, and the reason why I say that is because you can fly to it, which is unusual. Um, so the Red Gyarados, he's actually a useful one to try and catch because he can learn both um, Waterfall and Whirlpool. Thing is though, he's not exactly easy to catch and he then knocks himself out because he's thrash and he got confused. So what I decide to do is I actually decide to catch this Magic Up, this very Magic Up actually, level 19. As we weaken him down, we give him a ball. We can evolve him into Gyarados and just catch a regular blue one instead of the red one. Um, Tentacle can learn Whirlpool, but it can't learn Waterfall. So as you see there on the map, I was able to fly to Lake of Rage. Um, what I'm doing now is I am going down to Mr. Pokemon's house when you defeat the Red Gyarados or you catch it, um, you get a Red Scale, you can trade it for an EXP share. So, if you were playing a perfect game, what item do you prefer? Do you prefer the key item and then just get another game and trade over an EXP share, which is something you can do? Or do you take the point of view of that you hold on to that key item and the reason why you have the key item is to use it. So are you uh, 
Is your game less complete because you haven't had that interaction with Mr. Pokemon and the trade of that item? That's how I see it. Same like with Kingdom Hearts 1 for example, people say for a perfect game to keep the postcards in your inventory instead of trading them for the items in the mailbox. Um, the postcards for me are a unique item that serve their purpose by being traded and until you trade all 10 of them your game is technically and I accidentally um, cancelled Magikarp's evolution that wasn't intent that wasn't intentional anyway I press the switch there's a little switch under the desk you can turn all the Persian statues off and save yourself from having to do a couple of battles alright get rid of Golbat so Basically what's happening in here is Team Rocket have caught a bunch of Electrode and if you turn the radio card on you will get a strange frequency on one of the channels and basically the story behind it is that it's making Pokemon evolve. Team Rocket want the Magikarp to evolve so they can turn them into Gyarados and sell them. Classic evil Team Rocket. Now you need to battle this trainer and you need to battle a trainer in the room to the left. And I've just noticed something, the Ekans on this are appearing pink. I think that might have been an error because Ekans are usually purple. Yes, this trainer here. You have to defeat him as well to get another password for the boss's room. Radicate Tail and Slow Poker Tail. Um, the little uh, spot down to the south of where you come out that stairs, uh, there's a hidden item in one of those lockers. I think it might be a super potion. Just to uh, just to put that out there. So the executive, he's a he's a pushover, and Blastoise is so over leveled because I've had to do so many battles as a solo run. A lot of these trainers become pushovers now. Yeah, I think it's in one of those lockers next to that PC. There's an item there, item finder, hidden item. So we've got the two passwords, we got the one from Murkrow, and now these two are basically Jesse and James. You have an Arbok there and and all that. Um, if you battled the other one you'd probably have a probably have a wheezing and a victory bell to battle against. Anyway, um, Lance says let's get rid of the electrode so easy enough just use dig dig will either knock it out or the electrode will explode itself as you see there so Lance will give us the HM for Whirlpool which I will teach to Gyarados Corsola can learn it as well Corsola is rare though I don't want to have to try and catch Corsola every time I play this game Anyway, with Team Rocket out of the way there, we can now battle Price. So, uh, now you have to bear with me because I had to remember how to actually get to him. That's why you will see me stand around and... And as you see, it's actually quite easy. It's actually not that difficult to get Price, to get to Price. But I had to sit there and try and remember it for... A split second there. When I first played this, it took me, I reckon it took me at least a couple of hours. I just could not figure out how to get to him. So, Pillars Wine is part ground, so Surf will knock that out in one hit. Icy Wind is actually a pretty average move. Now, after you beat the seventh gym, you will get a call from Professor Elm. And he will say that Team Rocket are on the radio, what is going on? We head to Goldenrod City and we will find that the town has been, in fact, invaded by Team Rocket. I remember that I didn't get the bike shop owner's business, so there, there you go. I think you got to take 500 steps with it from memory. Anyway, Team Rocket has invaded Goldenrod City. When I first played this game, this stage, I didn't mind this. This was actually a cool little addition to the story, a lot of people don't like it. They say it was unnecessary and it was long. I do agree with that. It is long and it does just kind of pop up, but I 
I like this part of the story. I think it gave a little bit more of an edge. And the thing is, a lot of the trainers are underleveled as well. And because I'm doing a solo run, I can't, I can't really avoid any of them. Now this, this is BS. This trainer is out of my line of sight and he sees me. That's BS. He should not be able to see me from that far away. I wasn't even in his screen. Anyway, let's battle another mandatory battle. Rain dance, I won't mind that. Get through all of these Team Rocket members. He's spinning fixed, he will keep spinning in circle. Another mandatory battle, this time against a Porygon. And we get into this dude's place where I can surf the coughing out. Although I've run out of PP. He sends out a wheezing, I do have dig which is also super effective, so I can get rid of the rest of the coughing, as well as his wheezing. Six Pokemon, all coughings and wheezings, which give you a lot of points as well. And they can all self-destruct, they can all poison you. And of course, yes, I did forget that I hadn't battled him, but he only had one wheezing, thank God. Now, I want to avoid those two trainers. I don't want to have to battle everyone. Look at that. There was... There's only like three trainers in that whole radio tower out of the... Uh, what, maybe eight or so? The rest of them, you have to battle them. Like, that's just how many mandatory battles there are. And of course, when I was going through here, I did forget that I... I battled every trainer in here except him, and he's the only one I actually had to battle. So that's what not playing this game for so long does. Now there's a rival battle here. And he is... He's not under leveled in the game. He's a little bit less than the previous gym leaders that we just did. Which is why this part of the game is quite... Unusual. In a way, because the gym leader, say Price, his Pillars one is level 35. All of these rockets are still in the 20s, so... Look, level 23, that's not that high. Anyway, this switch system, everyone had trouble with this when they first played this. This was the most convoluted puzzle that just could not be figured out. In the end, it is so simple. It is, that's number three. You just go three, two, one, and you can walk your way to the end. That's how simple it is. I kid you not. That's how simple it is. See? Three, two, one. And you won't be able to get the items doing that method. You, there's different combinations to get to the rest, to that item. Which, in the end, all it is is a bloody smoke ball. That's all it is. It's nothing special. But three, two, one. Walk your way to the end. Beat Team Rocket again. More mandatory battles. In here, every battle is mandatory. You literally cannot skip any of the Team Rocket members in this underground path. It's insane. Every battle. Every single battle is mandatory. That's why Blastoise is leveling up so much. And I can't prevent it because you cannot skip anything in this game. It's quite brutal. That's why this game takes so much longer than Gen 1 is because there's so many, so much more. Anyway, we reach the radio manager. That item there is an amulet coin, by the way. And you can get all the items in this earlier in the game, except the amulet coin, because there's two doors closing off. But if you enter and re-exit, the boxes and stuff will move around. You can actually get... One of them's a burn heal. I think the other one might be like a hyper potion or something. Nothing special, but just for those who who did not previously know. Now, don't forget, I haven't battled those two trainers, so let's not battle them. Blastoise is high enough level as it is. Anyway, we'll get our way through here. I think the reason why people don't like this part of the game is because it does send you around in circles quite a bit. And, of course, I did forget I actually need to go and open this door to get another mandatory battle. So, knock out two more Pokemon. 
Now, I don't remember if you actually have to beat this trainer, but I'm going to anyway. Now, all the Ekans in this are pink. That's an incorrect color. Ekans is meant to be purple. Okay, get rid of Golbat. Rocket Executive, as you see in Arbok, this is the same executive that we battled in the hideout in Mahogany Town. Now, this dude has a Houndour, a Coughing, and a Houndoom. How cool is Houndoom? Houndoom's a very cool Pokemon. Alright, he gives you the Silver Wing or the Rainbow Wing, whichever one it was. I think it depends on what, on what version you play. The other one is in Pewter City. Literally just a random dude just gives you the item. One of the random NPCs in the town. He's kind of near where the Pokemon is. Just randomly, he just... He's like, hey, you're a random person who I've seen the first time in my life. Have this exclusively rare item to catch a legendary Pokemon. You can just have it. Didn't mean to battle him, but Natu and Kadabra. Um, for those who don't know, there is an item finder item in these grass patches. That is a Max Arrive, which could come in handy. Uh, the, there's a Tangela, which also is the incorrect color. That wasn't a shiny Tangela. It's, it's an Elixir. I'm going to remember that, because Elixirs come in handy sometimes. Especially for the Elite Four. Okay, now the Ice Bath. Another mandatory battle. And I kid you not, you cannot get past these battles. There are so many of them. Now, thank God there's no trainers in here. Although the encounter rate in Ice Path is like enormous. Deli Bird, don't usually have that appear very commonly. Deli Bird is a awful Pokemon. It is so weak. Now this puzzle, I had to, I haven't done this for a long time, so I couldn't actually remember how to do it. So I did have to skate around in circles for a while as I continuously failed to... Like I said, I hadn't done it for a long, long time. So, as Einstein himself said, the, uh, the definition of insanity is to repeat the same method over and over again and expect a different result. That's why I did the same method twice and ended up in the same spot. There we go. HM7 is just casually laying on the floor in the ice path. Now, the thing is, if you look at the ice path from, like, a... Like, you're looking at it from a bird's eye view. If you could see the whole thing in the screen, because the Game Boy screen was so far, you couldn't see the whole area. If you look at that puzzle, like, the whole thing, it's actually very simple. It's because you can't see everything in the screen is why it gets confusing. All right, in here, you actually only need to push two of them through, but I can't remember which two they are, so I will push all four of them down. As I try not to make any errors, because you can push the boulder wrong and then have to redo it. You know what's amazing though? This game actually remembers that you've pushed the boulders through. Once you push the boulders through, they are through for the rest of the game. That is something that was not prevalent in Gen 1. The boulders reset. The boulders reset if you push them wrong, but once you push them through, they stay there. So it's actually pretty cool. Anyway, two boulders through. This one. Don't push it to the right. Very good. I did well back in this when I recorded this. Uh, how long ago did I record this? I think it was, it was actually a while ago. I think it may have been about two weeks ago. I've actually forgotten what I did in the run. Anyway, yes, again, I haven't played this for a long time. I can't remember how I'm supposed to skate around to get to the middle. So as... There we go, was it top? Yes, yeah, so it's top right that you have to do another full hill. Comes in handy if you get poisoned. 
That's a nev- that's a never melt ice item. Another deli bird. Deli bird is not usually that common. And yes, I. That's right. You have to go around on that jinx. Jinx is phenomenal in this game. I've used Jinx as part of my starting six a few times in Gen 2 playthroughs. Jinx is very, very good. Jinx was really good in Gen 1 as well. One of the best solo runs that I did was with Jinx. Anyway, after all that, I don't remember what that item was, but... We are through the ice path. We are in Blackthorn City for the first time. Now, you can actually get to Blackthorn City before you've done the Rocket Tower if you come through Dark Cave. The dude standing out the front of the gym there, he just won't move. All right, so this is a Dragon Gym. Blastoise knows Ice Punch, so Blastoise is going to go through this very, very easily, except for the Cedra. I've been hit a few times by a uh, smokescreen, but Blastoise manages to knock Cedra out. Push through a boulder, even though I don't think that one actually does anything. No, no, it's the other one that doesn't do anything. Cool trainer Cody. There we go. Push your boulder through. So Ice Punch will one-shot all of these dragons. And now we come up against Claire. And we are so over-leveled, it's not funny, but I can't do anything about that. So, and as I do an Ice Punch, I get a first hit freeze on Kingdra, which is even better because she said the victory was a fluke, maybe with the freeze. Um, Kingdra can use double team, which makes it an absolute beast. Like it gets so difficult to beat Kingdra if it uses um, if it uses double. Uh, excuse me, double team. Um, this area was different in Crystal. You could actually get a Dratini from the little that uh, house was actually enterable in Crystal, and you can get a Dratini. And if you answer him correctly, you can get. Dratini that knows extreme speed. In Crystal, that item that you pick up, the Dragon Fang, isn't actually the um, the story of this game. It's when you uh, get the Dratini and Claire's like, he failed the test, right? And he's like, nope, he passed. And then Claire will spit the badge up. Elmo will give us the Master Ball. Yes, I call him Elmo. And he says to check your gear map. We are technically in Kanto now, as a gear map will show. Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow revisited. We get up the waterfall with our Gyarados. That is Tojo Falls, there's a Moonstone in there. Can avoid that trainer. We can't avoid this trainer. So there is a few mandatory trainers out here, and their Pokemon are all pretty strong, which will give Blastoise even more levels. And I'm level 50 already, I didn't even intend to get this high of a level, but I just... There's been a few battles which I've battled by accident, but that wouldn't have made the difference. Blastoise would have still been up around this level. So you can surf along here, and you can avoid all of these trainers, which... For the first time in the game, we can actually avoid a few battles. Can we avoid him? No. No, we cannot avoid him. And that's against an Espeon of a high level. That's like a thousand point battle of experience. Um, there is a rest house here. We can regain our HP. Randomly spinning trainer, which we do manage to get through the first. We do manage to avoid a Cool trainer Gavin. You can get his phone number. That's how I remember him. Not skippable. He sees you from the furthest distance possible. Okay, dig. Kingler, use protect. Use protect again. Use protect a third time. Again with protect. And a fifth time. That is just ridiculous. So a Kingler and a Flareon and a Victory Bell is what he has. Um, there's a couple of trainers. I think there's like four trainers 
along this road that you can actually get the numbers of. And they're good re-battles. They are actually good trainers to have in your phone if you want to re-battle them. Again, another non-skippable battle. You can get her number two. Okay, we have the eight badges. Let's continue through. I don't know why that gate's even there and he's asking because technically I wouldn't even be able to get here if I didn't have the badges. Because I wouldn't be able to use waterfall. You need Claire's badge to use waterfall. And you need to go over a waterfall to get here. So the fact that there is a badge man there is completely obsolete. That man's job has no purpose at all. What's this item? X special. Blah. So in here, a lot of gravelers, you can get Onyx, you can get Donphan. Victory Road here is actually a decent place to train if you need to. The encounter rate is shocking because it's my first time going through it. Now you do get a rival battle here. Um, Blastoise has moves that are good against five, Kadabra, six. All six of his Pokemon are weak to one of Blastoise's attacks, so that rival battle is like nothing. Again, I shouldn't be level 50 at this stage, but couldn't help it. So let's do a save. Don't worry about the game time because I use a speed up toggle. It, uh, it confuses the game. I can't deposit that stupid Spearow because it's holding mail. Like literally this game just just craps itself because you're holding mail. Which is funny in a way. It says Dark Cave leads to another road. You give it to a dude uh, to the right to the east of Violet City. The dude that's standing by the tree. Near where the bug catcher, bug catcher Archie, I think his name is. You can get his number. He in Crystal, he you can get like um, trainers' numbers, and they'll give you items. Sometimes he'll give you berries, which is pretty useless to be honest in this game. Now the reason why I saved again is because if you use the speed up toggle while the game's saving, it doesn't save properly. I can do save states, but anyway, Elite 4, let's see how we go. We're level 52, and as you see, I did also forget to heal. So, alright, Knockout Executor, use a Bite, I should have used a Bite on Jinx, which I didn't. So I deserve to get knocked out on that. Now I'm full health, let's battle Will again this time at full health. Ice Punch on Zatu, Ice Punch on Executor, Bite on Jinx, that's better, Bite on Slowbro, that's super effective as well because it's a dark move, and preserve some Ice Punch by using Bite again. Very good, Koga. I also didn't buy, ah oh, I did, I did buy Hyper Potions. Okay, let's battle Koga. Former gym leader of Fuchsia City, Ice Punch gets rid of uh, Ariados, even though it did use double team. Ariados is a, a dangerous Pokemon on this. Fortress uses spikes, that's fine. I use dig on muck, which uses minimize, which, and now Blastoise, despite one minimize, missed twice. Koga's Crobat used double team, and I need to hit it one more time for restore. Crobat is frozen solid. And you know what? Because he used a full restore, I'm using a hyper potion. And I don't care. I don't care if it's, oh, no battle items. Koga used one, therefore I use one. That's only fair. I heal again. I do have a full heal. Let's continue on to Karen. No, Bruno. Okay. Hit on top. Let's use Surf. Use Dig. So I use Dig. He misses me with Dig, then uses Protect. Alright, get rid of Hitmon Chan and. Blastoise got confused, it hit itself in confusion again. That time it hit Surf. Do I have no more confusion? Do I have enough? Oh! Oh boy! Onyx is no problem, but oof! 
Bruno almost knocked out Blastoise, which is quite funny. Anyway, Blastoise is back to full health. And at level, what is it, 58, 55? Anyway, it's so over level, but I'm running out of PP for Surf. I'm gonna have to start using Ice Punch. I'm now confused. And of course I hit myself twice. That's just the way it always is. Ice Punch on Vile Plume, very nice. Stun Spore, luckily that didn't hit me. If that got me, that probably would have been a loss. We use Dig on Gengar. Gengar then uses Curse and knocks itself out. Get rid of Murkrow, Houndoom, that'll go down from Surf. Excellent, level 55. Lance's highest level is 50, so it's closer to what Blastoise's level is. But like I said, there's so many mandatory battles in this. Doing a solo run, you just can't do anything but level up. I guess you could use the EXP share that you get after getting through that Gyarados to cut the experience down a bit, but I mean, I'm gonna need the experience for red anyway, so. Ice Punch on Gyarados. Here is the battle against Lance. Gyarados hit me with a Hyper Beam. We get rid of Dragonite's easy enough, or with Ice Punch at one shot. Aerodactyl, let's go for Surf. Aerodactyl is faster than me. Now Lance cheats. His Aerodactyl knows Rock Slide. Aerodactyl cannot learn Rock Slide by TM. It's not meant to be able to learn Rock Slide, but Lance's one does. So we get through Lance, and that is the end of the first section of the game. And is the game over? No. When you first played this as a kid, this was phenomenal, although I do have to get to Cherry Grove City because all of my other Pokemon are in the box. So, yes, there is a post-game on this. In Gem 1, the only post-game really was catching Mewtwo. The post-game in this sends you all the way over to Kanto, where your journey in red, blue and yellow took place. Uh, basically, what you do is you go onto the ship over in Olivine City. What was I doing? Why did I do that? I was probably tired. Anyway, head down here and you head into the ship. And yes, if you saw that graphical glitch, that happens from time to time when you use a speed up toggle. Just at the right time when you're talking to an NPC, you will get a big graphic blurb of letters and weird stuff. Um, I don't know why I entered that room. Um, basically, you talk to that sailor there's a dude that bumps into you and says he's looking for his granddaughter. The sailor is in the room to the right of where your uh, your healing room is. So get rid of that sailor. He will go back to his post. You never see him again. But anyway, the girl, yeah, she went by here. The good thing about this is you can skip all the trainers on the boat. Thank God. You can finally skip some trainers. Anyway, now that we're through him... He will give you a Metal Coat, which you can use to evolve some Pokemon. Pop Quiz, you can actually get Metal Coat before him. If you catch a Magnemite, it's got like a 5% chance of having a Hold item, which will be a Metal Coat. Same with um, Slowpoke with King's Rock, I think, as well. Okay. Now, what, how do I play this? Um, so first of all, the post game in this, um, it's got all of Kanto, but there's not many trainers about, as you would see. I get the feeling that they could only just fit this game onto a Game Boy cartridge. Remember, those games weren't very big. Um, so the way I like to do this, I actually like to get to Pallet Town as quickly as possible first without battling anyone else. So, um, I was actually trying to remember what to actually do, I think, when I was playing this. And I couldn't remember. Um, until I remembered that first, I actually have to go to Lavender Town. Don't I? I have to go to Lavender Town first, right? You talk to the guy and he says about the power plant issue. You probably don't have to talk to him. Now that I'm thinking about it, you can probably just go straight to the power plant, but I couldn't remember. And 
Yeah, so where Pokemon Tower used to be in Gen 1 is where this radio tower is now. So let's fly to Cerulean City. Where that guard is, where that staircase is, is there? Does that lead anywhere? I'm not sure. I could put in a clip through walls check. I might actually do that in a separate video. I'm going to put in a clip through walls. I'm going to clip onto the guard and I'm going to walk into that staircase. I'm going to see if that leads anywhere. Probably crash a game, but. Okay, there's a Golduck. And a Sand Slash. So basically now it's all just leveling up and working up to red. There are eight more gym leaders here as well. Um, there are still, believe it or not, there are still mandatory battles. The mandatory battles on this game just never end. Anyway, uh, to get to the power plant you need to surf down from here. The power plant is no longer abandoned and Excuse me for a sec, I really need a drink. Oh yes. Literally, how old is your trainer in this? Probably 10, probably a teenager. There's a hardened criminal wandering around Cerulean City. Police officer, boy can I ask for your cooperation, can you please go find as a child, can you go find the hardened Team Rocket criminal? Anyway, beat him, and now an item will appear in the gym, which is, uh, you can, the item finder will ping if you use it, but it is the machine part. It is sitting there in the middle of the gym. Anyway, that Team Rocket member, he gets referenced uh, in one of the later gen games as well. Anyway, let's back to the power plant and give the man his machine part that he was so upset to lose. There we go. And now that that machine part is fixed, the generator runs again. All of Kanto has power because apparently one entire basically world can get powered from one power plant. What was, what was powering Gem 1's in Gem 1, the power plant was abandoned. What was powering all the home's electricity if the power plant is doing that now? Huh. I never thought about that before. Anyway. Um, now that we have the radio card, which is the reward for getting the power back on, we can get rid of the Snorlax that's here. Poker Flute. Snorlax is level 50 and is holding a leftovers. Wait, is it holding leftovers? I don't remember. Yes, yes it is. Because you can get two of them in the game. One from Snorlax, and you can pick one up from a bin in the restaurant in Celadon. Anyway, through Diglett Cave, cut all the trees down, skip through Viridian Forest, grab another elixir, that's handy. And then come all the way down, all the way down, 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 through Viridian City. Quick hill. Down. Down, down, all the way in to Pallet Town where the original journey began. Let's, this is what I do, have a chat to Red's Ma, and head over to the PC, head into the room, and we will begin our Kanto journey just like we did in Red and Blue. Let's head and see Professor Oak, he tells you to go collect the gym badges and tells me that Pokemon appear in grassy areas as if the Champion League Pokemon trainer didn't already know that but anyway mandatory battle Got, can't skip that now or oh, technically I could fly but I will need to level up for red anyway so what the hell so the trainers here are level 31s again I mean you just beat the Elite Four which had a level 50 Dragonite so the trainers here are level 30s again, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, in Gem 1, Viridian City's gym was locked. In this one, the gym leader simply isn't there. 
uh, he's down at Cinnabar Island. You can actually go talk to him whenever you want. You don't have to do the game in any particular order for the post game. You can do it in whatever order you want. To be honest, um, to get to everywhere, you need to fix a power plant first. But once you fix a power plant, you can go anywhere you want in Kanto. You can do the gyms in whatever order you feel like. But I'm going to do them chronologically from the original game. So first of all, let's battle Brock. And would you believe it, there is another mandatory trainer. He has that sand slash. He had a sand shrew in the first game. He didn't have a duck trio. They should have put duck trio on him because he had a diglet as well. Omastar. Basically, Brock's a pushover. None of his Pokemon have any good special defense. Two of them are rock types. Surf does them all in. And I will walk it. Um, that guy there, he's the one that will just randomly give you this really rare item because he apparently reminds me of when he was a kid. Rainbow Wing will unlock you to be able to find Ho-Oh. There's two trainers out here. Youngster Jimmy. Level 30s. And level 6 wild Pokemon. Run straight into a trainer by accident. Fire breather. And would you believe it? There's a rival battle in here. In Crystal, you could also have another interaction with your rival in the Dragon's Den as well. Alright, get rid of his team. As you know, because Blastoise is a varied move set, he has a super effective move against all of his Pokemon. And he's not any stronger than Wheel from the Elite Four, so we dispatch of him pretty easily. A level 12 Pidgey and a level 34 Pidgeot for some reason. Into Cerulean City, and obviously Misty wasn't there before, she's not there now, so where is Misty? So if you go up the cape, throw back to the first game, Nugget Bridge, there are supposed to be five trainers here. They're all mandatory, can't skip them. Uh, there's actually six trainers. Is that, they added another trainer and he's like, ooh, ooh you're tired out, I'm gonna battle you now, and you thump him as well. Uh, let's get rid of Super Nerd Pat with his Porygon. Cool trainer Kevin is this dude. Let's get rid of him. Python Wartortle, nice and easy. Get rid of his Charmeleon. He had a Rhyhorn, Wartortle and Charmeleon. Misty's hanging out by this little uh, area here with a boy and then they both like run away and they get embarrassed for whatever reason. Like, who the hell cares? Like, you can be in public with a boy and see a person you have never seen before and you both just run away like what what that doesn't why do people like no one does that bro anyway Misty and her trainers are now all back I can surf over to Misty instead of battling the trainers and let's battle all right get past Golduck I remember how this battle went too Lapras dig perish song I have, I can't beat Misty before that Perish count runs out. So, yeah, I have to redo the battle. And try and knock Lapras out faster next time. Perish song. Unbelievable. So, let's duck back in to battle Misty. This time, bite, bite, bite. Quagsire, bite, 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 Lapras. I go for Surf. It went for Blizzard. How much does Dig do now? I really shouldn't go for Dig because if it hits Perish Song again, I'm in trouble. But it doesn't. Now, it sends out Starmie. Bite does a lot of damage and Starmie hasn't got anything that can damage me. So we get through Misty on the second attempt. And... Sticking with tradition, let's walk through Kanto and redo the journey. It will obviously add time onto the run, but that's okay. Because I really do actually enjoy repeating the steps from the original game. That dude's now moved from that underground path because the power plant's fixed. 
Um, there's no trainers out in this area like there was in the first game. We're now in Vermilion City. We can now go and battle Lieutenant Surge, who doesn't have a gym puzzle anymore, which is fantastic because the original one was really annoying. We have to battle at least one trainer, so I'll make it this dude. So the annoying gym puzzle will no longer exists. We can use Dig on pretty much every Pokemon that Surge has and just completely blitz him. He has two electrodes. So, Surge is down, let's continue on. Uh, after Vermilion, um, usually you'd go to the SS, you'd have to go to the SSN first, then Diglett Cave, but anyway, first of all, let's head, oh, after beating Surge, you would usually head to Rock Tunnel, so let's go through Rock Tunnel. Despite the fact that there's literally nothing in it, there's some items on the floor and there's a couple of item finder items. In the first game, there were no items or hidden items with the item finder, there were trainers. In this one, there's no trainers, but there's items. And you do need flash as well. So anyway, Rock Tunnel isn't quite as big. Is it bigger in this one? No, I, I reckon it's bigger in, um, in first gen, but as you see, the layout for it is actually quite different as well. And Kangaskhan, yes, Kangaskhan does appear in this and it's quite rare too. So some of Rock Tunnel does re resemble how it looked in Gen 1, but most of it's different now, so... Anyway, it's not that difficult to get through. Plenty of items around though, you can pick up some nice stuff. Another battle I can't skip. I can go the other way, but there's another trainer standing there anyway. Now we're in Lavender Town. Uh, usually here you'd go to Pokemon Tower and talk with Mr. Fuji, who is in this game as well. He is, he is still around. Anyway, from here you would go to the left. The whole pier area to the south of here, I never cross in Gen 1, and I don't need to in this game either. So let's skip a battle. Now the thing is, uh, you only need to battle one of them, you can zone out, but uh, whatever. I mean, I need to train for red anyway. Red's lowest level Pokemon is like level 75, and I think that's his Snorlax. And his Snorlax is a pain in the ass. His Snorlax is so strong. That underground path is locked. Usually you would go through there to get to Celadon, but I'm just going to quickly uh, duck through Saffron because that underground path is closed. Probably to preserve game space. Okay, now that we are in Celadon City, usually you would go to the game corner and you would fiddle with the poster. In this game, it just says there's nothing behind it. But anyway, we will head to Celadon's gym straight away and get through Erica. Don't need to do all the trainers in here, which is a nice change. Anyway, Erica, obviously, since Blastoise is overleveled, he will smash through Erica with Ice Punch. That's the thing, all the gym leaders in this aren't stronger than Lance, so you pretty much blitz this even if you're not overleveled and you have a balanced team. The post game in this is actually really easy because he is strong enough anyway. Anyway, usually from here we would go through Cycling Road. And there is a couple of trainers out here. I just hold the speed up toggle and I end up encountering like all of them that are on this side of the road. No. Okay, as we progress through, as you see, this path is blocked. And the reason why I've zoned out a bit, my laptop, which I am watching the playback, is making a really strange noise. I get the feeling, um, now Janine is this one in the corner. 
You can talk to the other fake ones and get into another battle, but I don't want to. I just want to get through it. Um, so there we go, get through Janine. Yeah, all the audio is like distorting out of the laptop. You probably can't hear it through the microphone, but I mean, I get rid of the audio anyway from the game because of all the blodgy sort of noise that's speeding up the game and I just add some some of my background music which I made that background music by the way I recorded that myself I have been a music teacher for more than 10 years now as well so anyway we are in Saffron uh, now yes there is a little story thing here you need to come here and get the Clefairy for that, uh, for copycat in Saffron, um, that will give you a rail pass, so you can dart between um, Goldenrod City and Saffron. You can get between the two, um, the two locations much easier. Now, yep, let's battle Sabrina. Um, oops, yes, I did battle couple of her trainers. Now Sabrina, is her pathway exactly the same as it was in Gen 1, like the warp panels? Yes. Oops. Uh, okay, Doris. Yes, the pathway is exactly the same as it is in Gen 1. Anyway, Sabrina, because Blastoise has bite, it can pretty much just chew its way through all of her team. Although, she does get the win. Amazingly, yes, she did get a win. Mind you, she did also use a healing item. She did recover Alakazam's HP, but Blastoise shouldn't lose her battle. Um, there is a fighting dojo, but there's nothing in it. There's just a dude who says a Karate Master's in a cave for Johto. Uh, if you, when you beat him, you can get a Trogue, or Tyrogue, I think is how you pronounce it. Sand attack, that's not good. But managed to hit, and managed to hit, and we managed to win this time with full health. So it really was a fluke that Sabrina won the first battle, I think. So after Saffron, uh, usually yes, and we go down and we face Blaine. Um, now in this game, as per story, uh, um, What's it called? Cinnabar. Cinnabar Island no longer exists. Um, oh, well, it exists, but it's been melted away. The volcano erupted. Um, there's Blue. He's the leader of the Viridian City Gym. And for those who don't know, um, do I pick it up straight away? No, I don't. Um, th there's a rare candy on that Cinnabar Island if you know where to press A. So, uh where the Seafoam Islands are, this is where Blaine's gym is now. Seafoam Island is where you caught Articuno in the original red, blue and yellow. Anyway, obviously Blaine is no problem because Blastoise has Surf. And now that red, not red, uh, blue, now that blue is back at... Um, oh, and also, um, now that all that's done, uh, this pathway is now clear. Just wanted to show that. Let's head to Viridian City and battle Blue, who... He's a, he's a challenge because he's got a varied team. So... So this is the original rival battle from the original game. There's his Pidgeot. And he's also got good level. He's higher level than Lance. There's Executor, which is another Pokemon he used in the original. Alakazam, yep, he used Alakazam as well. Gyarados, he did have a Gyarados, depending on which starter you picked, of course, but yep, he also had Arcanine, and his last one is right on. so, he's not a tough battle for a Blastoise at this level, but if you're playing this game with a balanced team, usually by that time, um, he can actually be a bit of a challenge, anyway, come here, have a little chat to Oak, and Oak will say, yeah, you can go to Mount Silver because you got all the badges. 
And basically, um, if you look at the time left on this video, I am seeing 26 minutes. Yeah, that's how long it took me to finally get through red. And basically what it was, was um, me losing to red, battling the Elite Four to gain a level, losing to red again, battling the Elite Four, gain a few more levels, fight red, lose again, and so... Uh, skip ahead a little bit if you just want to see me beat red but I, I lost to him like maybe six six to eight times something like that I did lose to him quite a bit um, remember reds uh, reds lowest level Pokemon is like level 75 and Blastoise is only level 69 so the difference between red and like the rest of the game is like it's a massive jump um, Blue, who was the second best trainer, his top level was like what, 56 or something, something like that. Red's lowest level is 75, his top level is Pikachu at level 81. Pikachu's not that strong, mind you, but um, the rest of his team, he's got his Blastoise, he's got Charizard, he's got Venusaur, they're all like level 77. He's got, a, I think he's got an Espeon or an Umbreon, I think it depends what version you play. But yes, he has got that evolution as well, which is level 76, something like that. Basically, what I'm saying is red is not easy. Um, even at level 69, I didn't expect to win it at this stage, and I definitely don't. Blastoise has just lost attack. So I can't even knock Pikachu out with one dig. It missed with Thunder. Then he healed it. Then he used another full restore. Then it missed Thunder again, so I knock out Pikachu. But um, obviously Venusaur is going to be at least three hits. Solar Beam almost knocks me out. I did get through Venusaur. Espeon, level 73, but anyway. So obviously Blastoise is going to have to be leveled up to have any chance of defeating Red. So quickest way to level up in this it's not to battle around like anywhere the fastest way to level up it literally is to defeat the elite four that is the absolute fastest way to level up so that's what i do so bite will knock out all of wheels pokemon pretty much in one hit just about level 70 and yeah basically the battle the battle ahead was tough with against Red. I lost to him maybe like, yeah, I'd say it would be at least five or six. So every time I lost to him, I'd come back to the Elite Four and basically beat them and then rebattle him. See how many times it took. So um, basically, that's it. It was just me battling the Elite Four and defeating red so i'm actually gonna cut and edit here i'm just gonna edit to the battle where i beat red because nothing interesting happens it's just repeating this losing to red repeating this again it's not interesting viewing so let's skip ahead okay let's drop him back there blastoise is now level 80 there's about 12 minutes left so i would lose to red a few more times at this point i had lost to red uh, maybe like, uh, actually I think it was, it was maybe more than seven or eight. So it was at this time, I actually decided to go around the world map and collect up a couple of rare candies because they are, they are around on the map. Um, there's one, it's in that little nook there. There we go. Rare candy is on that tree. There are more around the world map than what I picked up, but I'm being honest, I can't quite remember where all of them are because it has been a while since I last played this so anyway um, I go into the underground and then Mr. Uh, then the name raider's house and I'm thinking where's the train station it's the building that's got the train tracks running through it that's how tired I was after this run I'd been doing this for like what was it nearly two hours yeah, nearly two hours that I've been doing this run. Okay, this is where it is in Cinnabar Island. There's a rare candy in the little pocket there. 
And there is another one in um, Vermilion City. If you talk to the um, to the poker fan president, um, it's where you got the bike voucher in the original game. In this game, if you talk to him again, he will give you a rare candy. And then says, I prefer to raise my Pokemon properly as... Oh, I prefer to raise my Pokemon by battling or whatever, but... It's basically basically his way of flexing and saying, I train my Pokemon better than you do. <laughs> so, alright, let's head back to Goldenrod. And once again, fly to Mount Silver. Um, flash our way through. You'd think I'd almost memorize the button commands. I went... So, well, I first battled uh, Red at level 69. I'm now level 80, and I was pretty much losing per level, so I've probably lost to him at least 10 times. Even with the Blastoise at this level, Red is still very, very difficult. I didn't use my Red Candy, so this is a level 80 battle. Um, I kept needing three hits to knock out Venusaur. It would use Sunny Day and then hit me with Solar Beam and basically just rip my health off. Now, what I'm hoping for here, Espeon's not too bad because I've got Bite, but uh, Snorlax can paralyze me with Body Slam, which again does a lot of damage. If I want to win, I really need to get a freeze against Snorlax because Snorlax is the one that's really doing the damage right now. So anyway, um, I quickly duck in here just if you see where Blastoise's level is. Um, use the rare candies when you've just leveled up, you know, get the most out of your candy. Um, when I do playthroughs for me, I sell the rare candies. That's why I always end up with so many Poké Dollars. But anyway, we are now level 84 with the help of the rare candies. Which, um, to be honest, I didn't think it would take Blastoise up to level 84 to be able to beat Red, but it did. Red's a tough battle, and His Snorlax is very, very bulky to get through. And at level 75 or whatever it is, it's also got a lot of HP. Not to mention, you know, there's an Espeon in there, there's a Venusaur that's doing damage, and even getting through Snorlax, there's still a Blastoise and a Charizard to get through. Charizard's not too bad. Um, Red's Blastoise itself can't really damage me, so that shouldn't be a problem, but we'll see. So, what is it? Level 84 now, so... Uh, let's get back up to the top of the cave. And let's do him one more time. Level 84, so dig on Pikachu's a one here, and I move first. Ice Punch on Venusaur, two shots, perfect. Espeon, bite, and it's only just survived, but it used, um, I think it used Reflect. Ice Punch, and yes, yeah, Snorlax will use Amnesia and raise its special defense. I'm paralyzed again. And this time, Snorlax gets frozen, which I really needed a lot earlier, but <clears throat> it is what happened. I decide to use a full heal on Blastoise, but I keep its HP at the same, just as like a, you know, Red uses full restore on his Pikachu. He, he will use full restore on his other Pokemon as well. But anyway, his Blastoise, unless I heal, his Blastoise knocks me out. I get the feeling I'd knock his Charizard out first hit, so as long as I, ca as long as I can get through Snorlax, and not lose too much health. Like, if I can get an easy, like, first or second try freeze off Ice Punch, Blastoise should have the battle. Now, that is relying on luck a little bit. But, lest we forget, I'm level 84, and at this point, I'd been playing this game for over two hours. And I was... I remember the day. I was pretty tired to begin with when I did this run. I really shouldn't have done it. I should have waited till the next day. But I did it anyway, and and to be fair, like I'm not using any stat boosting stuff or any glitch, any stat raising moves to keep Blastoise as close to its natural strength. I accidentally used Ice Punch on Pikachu, it's lucky he didn't use Thunder. And Venusaur survives with just a couple of HP, which is fine. We knock out Espeon, Snorlax, Ice Punch, and Special Defense went up, Ice Punch again. Ice Punch again, Special Defense up again, Reflect is off, Body Slam and I'm paralyzed. It's just... So I decide to use a full heal, but... And then a dig, but look, 
Even at level 84, Blastoise cannot get through that level 75 Snorlax. Which is pretty crazy when you think about it. Like, we're talking nine levels higher, and we're talking a Pokemon like Blastoise. This is a quality Pokemon. That says a lot for Snorlax. Snorlax is, like... Stat-wise, he's not the most powerful by a long run, but... Because he's got so much HP, and he's got that tendency to paralyze his body slam and and use the rest, Snorlax can be really difficult to knock down. So, alright, dig against Pikachu, that's a one shot. Let's get in against Venusaur, get a freeze, which is nice, but I want to save that for Snorlax. Three bites on Espeon that time. Ice Punch on Blastoise, first try freeze. And straight away I was like, if this is going to be this is going to be the one, and remember, Pokemon thaw out in Gen 2. They didn't in Gen 1, unless you used a fire move. But in Gen 2, they do thaw out, but we are now against Blastoise with full health. And it takes four Surf to knock him out, and then we have Charizard. And at level 85, after, what, two hours of play, and cutting through the training it took to get up there and beat Red, we have finally managed to topple the former champion, the best trainer in the game, or the hardest trainer to defeat in the game, Red, has been defeated and we get the ending credits once again. Um, so yeah, I had to run through the Elite Four about another 10 times to level up, but Red is a very, very tough battle, especially for solo runs because, I mean, Red's team's varied as well. <clears throat> When I did this with Chikorita, Chikorita was level 100 and it needed a leftovers item to be held and like it barely, and I mean barely, got through. So I've done this with Feraligator. Feraligator did pretty good as well. Um, who am I going to do next? I'm not sure. I will revert back to Gen 1 as well. I've done about 60, nearly 60 or so runs on Gen 1. I think I've done 56 if my memory's right, but... So I do want to finish off Gem 1 as well. Sometimes you just got to play a different game just to have that little bit of a break. But the thing with Gen 2, it's it's longer. It's more difficult because of the, the post game with Red. So it takes longer, even with a good Pokemon like Blastoise. It took me two hours. Uh, for the difference, my Blastoise run on Gem 1 was like 50 minutes. So, you know, that's... And I do it live because if I do post prod like this, like post commentary, it takes another two hours to get a finished product. So I'll do it live until I come up uh, doing, oh man, imagine doing Magikarp on this. Uh, in fact, Magikarp probably couldn't even do it. But we will find out if it can do it on Gen 2. I do intend to do, intend to do 251 on Gen 2 as well, like I have done, like I'm doing with Gen 1. But anyway... Wherever you are in the world, thanks for tuning in. If you've made it this far, wow. Like, I applaud the, the attention span. Take care wherever you are. Stay safe. Keep well. Farewell.